I know y'all have been waiting a while for this one to come out. I know you've been waiting a while. I've been dealing with some exporting issues, but if you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube slash Spotify, whatever you like to consume your podcasts on, that means that I've figured it out. I figured it out and I have managed to upload this podcast to the internet. I've been as impatient as some of you all have with trying to get this podcast out because I think it was a great one. I think it was a great episode recorded with a great swimmer, to say the very least, one of the probably the greatest swimmers in junior swimming history and one of the better swimmers just in general on the planet right now. This podcast episode, I am joined by Thomas Heilman. He's a UVA commit. He's a world team member. He's, like I said, one of the fastest junior swimmers in history. And he's also just a good kid to have a conversation with. So buckle up, grab a drink, grab a coffee, grab a snack, and enjoy this podcast episode that I recorded with Thomas Heilman. Don't forget to like the video or leave a review on Spotify. Helps me out. Thanks. Enjoy. I think I kind of want to dive right into, I mean, you have the shirt on, <laughs> the Savage 7. Um, I think it was like one of the biggest recruiting moments in swimming like maybe the biggest recruiting announcement in swimming i would say um was your phone just like unusable like that whole day when the announcement went out or do you have your notifications like under control enough that you weren't just like trying to keep your phone alive the entire day yeah i had to like like silence my my instagram notifications but uh you still had them on well, yeah i mean you like on a normal day it's not like that's nothing bad but yeah i had to kind of silence that and then um luckily it was like on the weekend so i wasn't like in school or anything so it wasn't really that big of a deal um yeah until, like, having my phone on me um but but yeah, yeah I, was, I could imagine i mean i think you had like what like 500 comments on the announcement and then you also had like a bunch of stories going out and stuff i'm sure your dms were a nightmare yeah no yeah it was it was fine honestly but um yeah, was, fun, fun at the same time. Yeah, it was really fun. And uh, the like five and then eventually six of us that kind of had that that moment, uh, we're all really excited about it. And we were like texting back and forth and stuff. So yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, dude. I mean, that that sounds like every high school kid's dream. You know, the the recruiting, I mean, the announcement, like you go through all, all the trips. You took all five trips, right? I took four. You took four? I took four too. Yeah. I still kind of like wish I had taken one more just for fun um well actually i guess i ended up taking like eight or nine because i i transferred but i guess i got them all in at the end but um so how how did all of this like come together um was this something that like the uva coaches were like hey what if we did this thing was it something that like one of y'all one of the savage seven was like what if we kind of all did it at the same time like how did this this thing come together because this is something that i don't think at least to my knowledge that has ever been done in college swimming before yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't anything by the coaches. Um, they were supportive of it and, like, um, didn't push us into announcing or anything. But it actually it started with um, Thomas Mercer and uh, Josh Howitt, I believe, were the first two to, like, verbally tell the coaches they were committing. And then um, they kind of let us, me and Maximus and Grant um, and Jackson, know that, like, we're waiting out for you guys if – and. Uh, and hopefully you guys commit here as well. And then we'd had this really cool moment, um, like it, how it kind of ended up. So um, kind of shout out to those two guys um, for kind of coming up with the idea. And I, I think some of them or a couple of them were committed for like three or four weeks almost before we eventually committed. So they kind of kept it on the down low and, um, you know, for such a big time in their in their life and such a big announcement to like hold out like that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's sick. I mean, <laughs> you're thinking about me as a high schooler, no shot I'd be able to keep that under wraps. <laughs> I mean, it's it's your your big moment, right? You go on all these trips and then yeah, I mean, somebody told me to wait three, four weeks. But that's that's pretty cool that you guys kind of like self-coordinated the entire thing because I mean UVA's got a ton of momentum. They're super loud. They've got a really good social media presence. So I was kind of expecting that it was like a you know, the coaches came in and they were like, look, we're going to put this huge class together and we're going to do this big announcement all at one time. But I'm glad that they were on board. Glad that y'all kind of like started it yourselves. That's that's pretty sweet. But speaking of UVA, uh, you were at the UVA Texas dual meet, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I couldn't be there. I was like really, really hoping I could be. I had some stuff to do in North Carolina, which was also very important. Just give, I think, like the people listening and also me selfishly, a little bit of an idea of like, what the atmosphere was like at UVA because based on the videos and based on the photos, that place looked like it was absolutely rocking. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hit Saturday morning um, was kind of like a normal dual meet, like you'd see in a, any college. Um, obviously, they still had probably eight to eight hundred to a thousand fans there, so it was pretty exciting. But Friday night was really like the the main event, so to speak. Um, I mean, the, the entire crowd was was packed. Like you, if you didn't get there fifteen minutes before the meet started, like you were standing four rows back, and you like you were like standing on your tiptoes to like actually even be able to see the pool um and like they had the the, the the dj going and like turning the lights on and off and stuff like that and uh it was just really exciting and then like obviously uh, they put together like the one-on-one -on -one races which was really cool too so you get like you get olympians stepping up one-on-one -on -one against each other uh from different teams and you have both sides of the deck going crazy um and just really elite competition honestly is what it came down to um regardless of you know how many people are there it's just always fun watching um you know olympians and olympic medalists go at it like that um so yeah no, it was it was it was honestly crazy like i've been to their meets in the past and they've been exciting but that friday night session was really like another another level up. um yeah yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think the UT NC State dual meet that people talked about last season was kind of the same situation. I've been to a ton of UT meets. Uh, Why it's a good friend of mine, the associate head coach down there, and I went into that NC State Texas dual meet, and I had heard some things from Wyatt and Mitch, the uh, associate head coach for the women's team, and I was like, but I wasn't sold. I wasn't sold on the vision. I, you know, who knows? Especially in mm -hmm. swimming, you're like, you have no idea whether it's going to be 50 people, 300 people, or sometimes now we're starting to like realize that it could be 1200 people and then yeah. they like kind of put me right in in between the upper and lower section in the the texas swim center that place was going nuts it was yeah. going nuts and it was it was pretty cool to see that you could tell that the makeup of the crowd there and i i know that i think uva had a ton of like alumni and like they had that like recent alumni section that was like super loud and intense where all those photos were coming from um, but you could tell that there were like a lot of non-swimmers there that were getting like super rowdy and into it. And I yeah. like started trying to put myself in their shoes and I was like, we must be doing something right here because as a person that doesn't understand swimming, coming into a swim meet and not even knowing like when a race is going to finish, like it's, it's just cool to see that like the lights and the, you know, the ambiance and, you know, the crowd energy was just getting people that don't really understand the sports to just cheer regardless of like what's going on. But imagining being someone that just committed to a school and then getting to drive down there and see that dual meet on a Friday, were you mm -hmm. just like vibrating up there, like wishing you could go throw on a UVA cap or are you still calm and waiting your turn? Yeah, I was, I was actually talking to some of the recruits. I was like, Oh, I can't wait for a couple of years when hopefully Texas comes back and uh, we basically do the same thing again. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, I think you've, you've definitely, kind of harped on this on your social media is like the the lack of um social media presence from the ncaa on swimming but like uva and texas especially i feel like they have a really really good presence on social media i feel like that kind of helps out um getting those non-swimmers to kind of show up and um really cheer them on like like you said regardless of their knowledge of the sport um and it's, bring, it's just bringing a, a bigger audience which um is definitely what we need right now yeah for sure i mean going into an olympic year um and you know you got some some good recruits coming in I, th I think the uh the growth of you know teams and their ability to communicate messages online has, has been like something that's really starting to take shape over the last couple of years i mean if you look at you know like ut football is is one that i get all over my social media and i just watch the stuff that they're doing and i'm like there's so many things that like we could apply here and here and here. And I know that they've got like a 25 person team, but I really think we're starting to do like 25% of what they're doing. And if we do like 30%, 35%, 40%, I mean, we could start seeing a thousand plus people in those stands, you know, at every single dual meet by the time, I don't know, you're a junior, maybe a sophomore or something like that. But yeah, dude, I, I can't imagine sitting there for, you know, how long was the meet? Like an hour and a half, two hours? Yeah. Yeah. About. Yeah. And just just having committed and being like I, I need to be in there i need to i need to be contributing now yeah. um but i mean we'll we'll save that for in a couple of years and you got the shirt on already but what is your schedule this year look like i know you just wrapped up a meet how did you feel about that meet in general i mean you were what 141 the 200 fly yeah uh 
for right now in the year, I was actually really, really happy with it. Um, threw a suit on just to kind of get some some reps in before um, juniors, which will be like my midseason championship. Um, but yeah, times were really good. Uh, got a lot of racing experience in um, in only a couple of days, which was really good. Um, kind of just you know working on the the little details, um, kind of fine tuning everything, but. But yeah, the meet was good. Um, couldn't really ask for more out of that for this point of the season. Um, like I said, leading up to juniors, which um, that'll be like my big little, little taper for that. And then um, later in the winter, I'll probably hit up a couple pro series meets, um, get some long course experience in leading up to this summer. Yeah, nothing, nothing going on this summer. Nothing, no big deal. <laughs> We're swimming short course right now. So wait, when is juniors? Is it December? Yeah, I want to say like second weekend of December, like eighth or eighth through tenth or something like that. Nice. So that that'll be here pretty quick. So yeah. I mean, what is what does the taper look like for you right now? Because um, I know like I think when I was in high school, I do like a two week. Granted, like dude, I was I mean forty seven years ago at this point. So tapering and just science and swimming was a little bit different. Um, but are you like a two week taper guy? One week, four week, ten week? What what does it look like for you? Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'll hit for uh, juniors. Um, but like for example. This past summer before nationals, I did about two and a half weeks, um, which it's a, it's a gradual taper. So it's not like I'm doing 2,000 yards a couple weeks out from. That's the just what I do just normally. Yeah. Now. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that, that was by far actually the longest uh, taper I've ever had. Um, like for juniors last year, I want to say I was like eight or nine days. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So, so that's, that's just like a little hit. Yeah. So hopefully. I think this year it might be a little bit more. Hopefully we'll go a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, I think me especially, but our entire team's actually really looking forward to it after um, this past weekend. Um, our relays were on point um, from la like compared to last year. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a really fun meet. Yeah, that team environment's fun. Um, how many like guys are you going to have there? Cause it's, it's like men and women's, um, like team trophies, right? Are you guys going to be like vying for a title or cause I was, I was typically like the only guy that would go from my team. So like most of my friends that I grew up with swimming were like people like me that were solo <laughs> at junior nationals. So I just kind of like link up and we'd form like a little click, but I didn't have any relays or anything like that. But like, what kind of team size are y'all going to be bringing? I want to say we have six boys, including me. And then three or four girls, I think. Um, it's a solid so team. I, yeah, pretty big team given we're only like, only have like 50 kids in our senior group. Yeah, it's a, a high density of junior national caliber individuals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, a, yeah. man, I didn't know I had all of those words back to back ready to go in my brain for a sentence, but that's pretty sick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, well, we'll leave juniors to when juniors shows up. I do want to talk a little bit about, you had a pretty big summer. Um, I'm sure it's like, has it like totally sunk in like the whole process? Cause you just kind of like, I mean, obviously you knew you were probably going to swim pretty well at worlds. I, I don't think anyone would believe you if you said like, Oh, I had no idea I was going to go 154 or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. But I'm sure it was kind of like a, I mean, cause I, I think I said my favorite reaction from the entire meet was the, the like clip of you after I think it was the hundred fly where you were just like, <sighs> Like what? And I think it just kind of like encapsulated like that that whole meet for you, where it was just kind of like everything was happening to you, and you were just kind of like rolling with the punches. But what was the world world championship trials first, and then talk about worlds? What was that trials experience like? Well, I mean, first of all, just the environment there was unlike anything I never experienced as a, as an athlete. Um, just, I mean the stands there were packed um it's kind of similar to the uva dual meet like it was just a show honestly um but i mean it was kind of my first real um senior level national meet like i've been to us opens in the past but those usually aren't like full strength meets um usually people missing so um i don't know going in i definitely thought i i had a chance to make that like make a run at the team um and i don't think necessarily a lot of people really had me in that conversation um so i mean i kind of was hoping to kind of go under the under the radar um and kind of 
surprise some people. Um, but I mean, overall, like, yeah, it was just, it was kind of like a surreal experience. Cause I mean, I thought I, I had a chance, but really actually like, um, completing the goal, um, was pretty cool. And then, like you said, that little shrug, um, I was kind of, kind of going for like that Michael Jordan kind of thing. Um, but I, everyone kind of took it as like, he is, he had no idea he was going to do that kind of thing, which I guess I'll take it. Um, yeah, both of them work, <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> that was actually pretty funny, but, um, but yeah, it was overall a great experience. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was like a, like a, a shocked Sally. Um, I, I was super bummed. I mean, do you have a video of, I think it was the two fly cause you made the two fly and then you made the hundred fly mm -hmm. the two fly. I guess I'm not bummed. Carson was my my previous guest on the podcast, and so I was yeah. glad that we got to see his celebration because he did he did win. But mm -hmm. when the camera's focused on, I'm sure you've seen the video. When it's focused on Carson, you just see like A tiny lot. little slivers of like you yeah, getting amped up, and like if you know swimming, you're like, dude, get get that shot on camera. Do you have a video of that celebration or? I mean, if you don't, and it was just like lost in history, at least like give us like paint a little bit of a picture of what went on. I, I think I probably do have a video um, somewhere, and I don't know exactly where. But I mean, honestly, I don't really remember much. <laughs> to, yeah, like, I bet. <laughs> um, like I, I kind of remember, I like the entire middle hundred of that two hundred fly. Like I don't really remember much about that. Um, but like coming home, uh, I was just like <laughs> really just <laughs> trying to get my hand on the wall, and then uh, once I actually turned around and saw that like I made the team, I kind of just like. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I was like, I was telling uh, Zach Harding like a year, the year prior at Junior Pan Packs, I was like, I'm saving my celebration for uh, if I make like a world championship or Olympic team or something. So I was like, all right, I got to do it now. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, the next thing I remember, I was just like walking on, on the deck with uh, him and Carson, which was actually a pretty cool moment. Um, Cause he was, Zach was really, well, both of them, but Zach, especially at Junior Pan Packs the year before was like, one of my big mentors. Um, and so being able to do that, like experience that with him, um, made it really cool. Um, and kind of a full circle, uh, moment for me, um, kind of moving up to the, from the junior team to the, to the senior team. Um, and how he kind of helped me guide, uh, guide me through that process a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you'll be, you know, in the opposite role soon enough. So in, enjoy every minute of it. Um, was So the celebration, I don't want to stick on it for too long, but it wasn't on camera. Was it just like you say, do you remember it? Was it just like a double arm water slap? Or I mean, apparently the other moment I misinterpreted and it was a, a Jordan Sally. So I mean, if, if it's anything, are, we, are these premeditated celebrations? If you're going into this, like if I make the team, I'm going to hit a, a Jordan clap. <laughs> Uh, not the, the first one definitely wasn't, um, I don't know. I think I like threw my hand up or something and then like, yeah, hit the water slap and then Carson like shoved me underwater. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was but, such a good clip. <laughs> um, no, and then, but yeah, the second one I was like, I, I, I think I did that at like high school at a high school meet or something like jokingly, oh, nice. um, a couple of years ago. So I was like, all right, mate, I'll, I'll pull it back out. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're like, I made the team again. I gotta, I gotta dig deep and go grab something that I feel comfortable with real quick. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no, I, I definitely didn't plan those. Um, but right I guess it worked out well. I guess. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it worked out well. The the celebration, you know, you'll you'll probably remember that for a couple of years. But the times are times are forever. Uh, that was super dramatic. But so we'll move on to world championships now, right? So trials kind of a blur you have i mean things happen really rapidly after that right <laughs> you're going to you know yeah. camp with the team pretty quickly and then all of a sudden you're on a plane you're headed over there um and then i mean just generally i guess before we get into like the the experience um we'll we'll talk meet first um the first international meet i don't think you can really put too heavy of an expectation on yourself but i'm sure that you know as a high level swimmer and you know, in swimming, it's a very data focused, data driven sport. It's really easy to put expectations on yourself and look at splits and go, I could have been point one faster here. It could have had a better reaction time, all that high level view. How did you feel about your performance out there? You're on a couple of relays, you swam a, a pretty good 200 fly, I would say. <laughs> um, just, yeah. I mean, how did you feel about your performance? Yeah. 200 fly, I think went pretty much as well as it could have been. Um, 
except for like you said, those couple tents that would have got me on the podium. But <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, like, I'm not disappointed about that or anything. Like, I know, I mean, like, one if I s- knew I was going to go 153 8 at the beginning of the summer, like, I would have taken that. Um, if you told me I, you were disappointed with that, I'd probably hang up. I'd probably yeah, just hang I mean, up and, and we'd be done. Exactly. I'd unfollow you on Instagram and that'd be that would be it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, like, I mean, the best time is is really the most important part like um but i mean moving through the the prelim semi and then finals um and kind of handling that well even though it was my first time doing that kind of format i was happy with that and um and then moving through that i think like the 105 prelim didn't quite go how i wanted it to go um which put me in a swim off which uh the british dude ended up beating me but um I, I think I kind of, y'all both swam faster though, right? Yeah, I think I dropped like a couple tenths and he dropped like seven or eight tenths or something like that um, from the morning. So, um, of course, I would have rather move on, but yeah, uh, I think that kind of just threw me out of my process a little bit, um, having to wait around for a few more hours and to do the swim off. Um, but in the end, like missing the podium and then having to do the swim off are all experiences that are going to help me down the road um especially with like trials being a prelim semi final kind of thing Mm -hmm. um so i yeah i mean definitely a lot of things i can take away from that um but then ending uh the last day with the relay and um the guys getting me uh a medal at finals um (laughs) i mean i I think that's the first (laughs) way to kind of end it out um so but yeah, I mean, three. I had three different races. Learned something from all three, and really, in the end, that's that's what's most important. I feel like. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, if if you're not gonna walk away with an individual medal, let's let's throw a swim off in there. Let's throw mm-hmm. at, as much stuff in there and, and get as much experience out of there as possible, right? Um, but you yeah. did you did come home with hardware, and I mean, I think it is definitely a good trial run for trials because yeah, I mean, prelim semis and finals is a a totally new experience. I mean, you don't really do that in swimming outside of the biggest of moments. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. the only time we do it. It's a, a little bit of a strange thing. Um, but so you did get a medal. You have a, a world championship medal, which is really exciting. And mm-hmm. then you went back to, to high school. So <laughs> <laughs> what is um, what was that experience like? Is it I mean, are people talking to you different? I know it's it's not like you just got drafted by the Braves. You know, it's we, we mm-hmm. talked about how swimming has some, you know, growth to, you know, continue to do. But you did break a Phelps record and Phelps was on a headset and in a video with you on NBC. And you've kind of gotten like this, this quick, you know, push, you know, people in swimming knew who you were, for, you know, for sure. After the stuff that you did, especially at like short course juniors. But now, like you said, you made a world championship team. You got a world championship medal. You got fourth, tied for fourth with Ilya. Um, another another stud 200 flyer, which that's going to be a blast to watch. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're kind of like getting back into the rhythm of things back home. So like, what was that experience like coming back home and, you know, coming back onto your, I think especially people are going to want to know what it's like going to a club meet now. You know, you just came back from a club meet or kids coming up and talking to you, you know, your peers coming up and talking to you and going like, Hey, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, coming home in general, like, I feel like not much really changed. Um, but I mean, the first time I see people maybe um, a little bit different, a little bit more excited, but uh, things kind of died down and feels like they did before this summer, um, which, I mean, I definitely think is helpful for me, um, not like making it more pressure than it needs to be or anything like that. Um, but then, but yeah, like, like you said, uh, club meets are, can be interesting. Um, I don't, I mean, definitely people are really, really respectful. Um, and like, if I'm behind the blocks or anything, like they're, they're respectful and, you know, let me do my thing. But, uh, I'm, I do like have people come up and ask for pictures, whatever, which, um, like, I'm fine with that. I, enjoy letting or I enjoy getting to let people like kind of pick my brain a little bit and I hope I can help other people learn um 
some things from me and sometimes I even learn things from them. Um, just getting different viewpoints from, from people at different, like different levels. Um, it's definitely a cool experience for me. Um, and, um, just, I mean, still competing with my team is, is still really fun for me. It's not like, I mean, doing, like I said, those relays that we had, um, moving into junior nationals, like having a shot to win those relays is, is going to be really fun. Um, so yeah, just overall, like everything feels pretty normal to be honest. Um, so yeah, I can, I can't really complain with any of it. <laughs> no, you shouldn't, you know, enjoy those pictures, enjoy the autographs, enjoy, you know, people wanting to come up and say, hi, it's, it's, it's earned. Um, I think, you know, a couple, not a couple times, sometimes in the sport, we, we tend to be a little bit over humble and not allow ourselves to enjoy the, the fruits of our, our hard work. Um, you're, you're doing some pretty cool stuff. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. And you brought home a world championship medal before you've graduated high school. And people are going to come up. People are going to say hi. People are going to, you know, I, one of my favorite stories is Sean O'Malley is somebody. He's a UFC fighter. If you guys don't know who he is, Bantamweight champ, 135 pounds, super like big personality. And I was sitting at a, um, uh, or in a hotel lobby here in Austin with him one time. And somebody came up and asked him to take a picture with their dog, just <laughs> the dog. Not the person who owns the dog, but they wanted a picture of Sean holding the dog. And I think in moments like that, especially like in swimming, I think we need to realize that we have it pretty good. <laughs> um, we don't quite have it. Yeah, we don't quite have like people doing that yet. Um, but dude, yeah, enjoy it. Um, I'm sure it's it's something that's confusing and a little bit weird, you know, because you're still the same person to you, but to other people that associate, you know, your times and your medals with you, mm -hmm. people are going to be more excited to see you. And you know, it's it's a fun thing. It's definitely a fun thing. Yeah, I think if someone asked me to take a picture of the dog, I might be like, <laughs> I'm drawing the line there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to think about though, right? Because like in that moment. You know, we, we had a moment to think about it and, you know, it wasn't happening to us. If somebody just hands you a dog, all of a sudden the photo's taken. And now that photo's on the internet and there's yeah. a headline out there. Thomas Hellman takes a photo with lab Labrador retriever puppy uh, named Ilya. <laughs> Rivalry begins. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, enjoy it. Um, so I, I do want to talk a little bit about the junior national team. I was in Colorado recently sitting down with USA Swimming. And one of the things we talked about was this junior national team. You've gotten to spend some time with the junior team. You've gotten to do some training mm -hmm. camps. You know, I'm sure you have, well, it's, you definitely have a lot of friends that are on the junior team. One of the things we talked about is that this junior national team feels a little bit different. This junior team feels like there's a lot of big personalities and there's a lot of, and it makes me feel old because now like y'all, when I see comments on your posts, I have no idea what they mean. And so I'm one, I'm old and two, you know, it's, it's fun to get to see y'all like just having fun and having, you know, big personalities. But I do want to kind of like put you on the spot and have you call out one person on the junior team for like, who has the absolute biggest personality on the team. If you had to pick one person. Oh, Hmm. I don't know. I feel, I feel like no one's like really out there. Um, really? Y'all like, we all have fun together. We all really push each other and like want to like experience success together. Um, but I mean, no one's like obnoxious or anything. Like when we're on those, when we're on those trips and like for the camp and et cetera, like, I don't know, we're all just having fun. Um, and then like we come home and like you said, like those like comments and there's certain like jokes, like inside jokes that we had from those camps and um, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, we're all, we're all just doing it together. Um, and you know, I think we, like all, all, all of us having fun together really pushes us all to, like I said, um, want to make, make, take the next step together, um, and be on those senior teams. Um, cause I mean, the junior team's fun, but like in the end, the, the real goal is making those, the big boy teams. Um, yeah, no doubt. but doing it, doing it with like the, the guys you, like grew up with, um, I guess you could say like that that's, what's really going to make it fun. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, and, and it happens quick. You know, the, the guys that you swim junior nationals with all of a sudden are wearing a, a different team's cap next to you at, 
you know, mm-hmm. conference or, or NCAAs. Um, yep. All right, we'll, we'll pivot the question a little bit since you didn't want to call out uh, any specific people. So if you had to pick one person on the junior team to be roommates with, um, we'll go ahead and say you can't pick anyone that's going to be with you at UVA because that could actually happen. If you had to pick someone to be like your roommate in regular life, they have to cook and clean. If they're not clean, then all of a sudden your apartment's going to be really clean. But if you had to pick a roommate or even like a roommate in an international meet, who are you picking? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll say um, I'll pick two. I'll say I'll say Scotty Buff and Will Modulin. And I do have a little prejudice here because they uh, they hosted me on my recruiting visit. So I actually did get to like <laughs> actually be roommates with them for a couple of days. You got a little peek behind um, the curtain of what it would be like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Fair. But it's an intelligent um, response. They, they've both been like a couple of my best friends for um, a couple of years now, and um, you know, like like you said, they're both pretty clean. But um, I, I just really enjoy hanging out with those guys. Um, but I mean, like like I said, I mean, really, really anyone on those trips, I would be more than happy to, you know, spend a couple of years with them. Um, there's not really anyone on that team that like, isn't a, a great person, let alone obviously a great athlete as well. Um, so yeah, there's not really a bad option. That's a good answer. You know, later on, I've got a couple of questions about media, but it seems like, have you had any like media training? We're just going to go ahead and jump into it. Have you done any like media training at all? Or are you just kind of like getting absolutely thrown into the fire? <laughs> Not really. Um, I don't know. I guess. I guess I, I, I've done a few interviews now, so I guess my media training is from just doing past interviews. But yeah, doing media. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're getting so, uh, a real time reps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, we're just having a conversation. Like, there's not that's much great. to it. Yeah, that's a it's a great way to look at it. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's also a lot easier when you're just like it's a Tuesday afternoon and you didn't just finish a 200 fly at world championships and you get a mic thrown in your face and they're like, what happened on the third 50? Yeah. I, I mean, I will say like, it is, this is a little bit easier than like when there there's like 10 or 10 to 15 cameras in front of you and people are asking you questions from different directions on that kind of stuff. But, but yeah. Yeah. That's uh yeah. Those like NBA press conferences and stuff where you, you have to like pick out who it is. And then all of a sudden you're like developing relationships. Like what, you know, if someone's going to ask you a stupid question, you know, if someone's like trying to get an answer out of you, yeah. um, I, okay, I, I don't think we do too much of that here. I can't leave though. Unfortunately, I can't just like walk <laughs> out and be like, that was a dumb question. You could, you could, <laughs> I mean, you could just like walk in one direction, but, but the issue with that is like, you would have to leave your phone there because yeah. if, if you picked your phone up, I mean, I guess you could just like turn the phone off and then my screen would like get big. That could be a pretty good effect, but yeah, you're right. You can't just like get up and walk out of the room. Like, like people do all the time. All right. Well, talking about the NBA, what, what sports are you like a big fan of? Uh, the basketball and football are definitely my, uh, my two biggest. Oh, I guess the two that I watch the most. Um, I used to be a basketball player. Um, was my second sport other like aside from swimming um and it's actually really nice that i mean uva's football team is not having the best season but in past years like they've been two really good teams to be able to go uh and watch like 20 minutes down the road um but but yeah like i'll watch like saturday and sundays if i'm not doing like if i'm not swimming or i'm not doing like homework or something like i'm sitting on my couch watching football um and then like weeknights before I go to bed, like I'll be watching college basketball. So um, those two for sure. And then like uh, the World Series just wrapped up. Uh, so I was watching that a little bit throughout the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just a sports fan in general. Um, I love the comp- Are I you a comp- Nationals guy? No, I'm actually – so we don't, we're like two and a half hours away from D.C., so we never really got into um, DC sports teams, um, but my my mom is from Chicago, so I'm I'm a Bulls fan, I'm a Cubs fan, uh, the Bears. Um, so there you yeah. go. I'm a I'm Houston, so I was down a couple hours away um, from. I'm in Austin, Texas now, and we don't have we have 
we have nothing. We're like the tenth biggest city in the U.S., and we have a we just got a soccer team, just got Austin FC. Um, so I picked Houston, which means Astros incredible rise from nothingness to championship and then a little bit of drama and then hopefully yeah. they've backed up the the drama a little bit but i mean as a kid that's been a fan of them forever it's kind of fun you know originally like when the articles came out i was like do i have to pick another team <laughs> and then now i'm like we've never like had the opportunity to be hated because we were so bad yeah like, everyone just felt sympathy for us they were like oh you guys are another 105 loss season for the astros i'm like yeah I watched all 105 of them. And now it's kind of like, it's kind of fun getting to be the team that people don't like. I mean, because now you've got the Texans who yeah, kind of like the Astros. Yeah, they're, they're doing okay. They're, they're, we're doing all right. We have a little bit yeah. of life, not a ton. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to like. Better than you know, a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's but fair. I, I don't, going for I don't the draft. Think... we're going for the draft picks. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get to the point of the season where you're like, please don't win. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but That's I mean, great. Chicago's had like two good seasons in my lifetime. We got like that World Series in 2016. Oh yeah. Um, and then the the Bears like I don't know five or six years ago that unfortunately ended in a missed field goal. But um, yeah, that that World uh, Series was huge. I think that was like the most watched World Series in maybe like ever. I think I put I watched a. Uh, not watched i saw a, a graphic go out on twitter of like the viewership for like the past 10 world series or something like that and i think 2016 had the highest and this year was like i think you were like one of 20 we'll just we'll leave it at that you were one of 20 people we were two of 20 people that were watching the world series this year but that yeah. chicago world series in 2016 was was pretty yeah. sweet i mean yeah. i was came still back. an astros fan at the time but i was watching every minute came back from a 3-1 lead too. I mean everyone talks about LeBron but what about <laughs> I, like what about Chris Bryant? I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that you were going to sneak that one in there. That was I mean dude, come on. No media training. Yeah, all right, sure. You're throwing in you just referenced something from basketball from the beginning, tied it all the way into a Chicago World and, Series. It's and impressive. it was the same year, and they don't give us credit for that. What was it? It was the same year as LeBron too. Oh, it's right. Yeah, he's got a little overshadowed. I know. That's unfair. That's unfair. I think so. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> all right. We'll get back into swimming for just a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> short course or long course? Ooh. Probably. Mm. Competing long course. That's like, a good answer. Race, racing long course. You're putting on a media training clinic right now. I, I wouldn't have even been able to like differentiate the training from racing aspect of it. And you just did that and also answered in a way that now I'm like questioning what my own answer would be, which is definitely going to be training short course racing. Yeah. Short course. Okay. <laughs> I mean, of course is just so much better. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, I mean, long course swimming is hard. It, yeah. It's really hard. It's a, uh, and I think that's why I like training and swimming short course, because like I wasn't really that good of a swimmer. I wasn't that good on top of the water. Once mm -hmm. I got like past six strokes of anything, I, I started to realize that my momentum from pushing off of a wall is now done. And now I have to create my own momentum and, and get out of my own way at the same time, AKA swimming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, I guess coming from someone who's like decent out underwater, it's like, I feel like swimming long course actually like racing long course actually like takes some skill, you know? Um, yeah. Different skill. Like, yeah. And just like hold your breath for like 60% of the race. Um, but when you're training, like, oh, yeah, when you have to swim back and forth, like 20 strokes of fly for 2000 meters, like I think it's old. Yeah. But, I, I can see that getting old pretty quick. <laughs> What's uh, I mean, since you said training, swimming back and forth, 2000 fly long course what's uh what's the hardest workout you've ever done Ooh. um dang i don't know we we have one that comes to mind i mean like our, our winter training blocks are always pretty tough um but i wouldn't really say we never we don't really have like one like one practice that stands out it's usually just like repetitive like hard practices um we do have one at Thanksgiving that's like 36 100s, best average. Oh, uh, all 36? 
on like 130 or something. Um, and like 12 or I don't know, maybe like 12 or so of them are, are kick. Um, oh. And you have like, you maybe have like five easy or like six easy throughout the entire one, like the entire 36. Yeah, that one's pretty rough. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like it would it kind of get to a me. point. You kind of get to a point where you're just like doing like 500 pace, and you're not even like you're like barely going fast anymore. But yeah, you, you've made the decision in your mind that like this is where we are. <laughs> but like, yeah, like you're like cramping up at the end, and like I don't know, everyone's like gets to the wall, and we're like <laughs> we like have no idea how many we have left, and <laughs> but um, so like that one that one actually might be coming up soon. Yeah, um, I was gonna say you brought up Thanksgiving, and I, hopefully, I didn't just like, like ruin your brain for the rest of this podcast. You're just uh, gonna be like, I, oh. I mean, we all know it's coming. So, yeah, but, that's no. that's the fun thing. I mean, especially in club training, um, it it can definitely get repetitive. But I mean, it kind of has to be because you have like new new people coming in all the time, and if it's working, dude, keep going. But yeah. I had the same thing every Christmas. We we would do like a, I think it was like an eight thousand meter practice total and it would either be like eight one thousands or 16 five hundreds and like the first two would be like it was just a mental training type yeah. thing which I, I talk a lot about how like we shouldn't be doing garbage yardage and stuff like that and i, I do think that's you know we're, we're moving away from it but also when you're when you're young i think sprinkle in like one or two one yeah. or two like little resilience practices where your brain is like shutting down, but then you finish it and you like look up and look at your teammates and you get out and you're like, all right, we did it. And then the next day you can do a, a Herbie Bem 25 and that's it <laughs> practice, yeah. uh, or something along those lines. But so yeah. how much, how much speed training do you do and like race pace training and like race simulation do you do on like a weekly or monthly basis right now? Um, right now, uh, when, when I double in the afternoons, Monday, Wednesday, um, those are like, those are, have gotten kind of transitioned to being more like power workouts. So I'll maybe throw on like a parachute or something and do like, um, hundred fly simulation or something like that, like kick count, stroke count. Um, but usually like our race pace days are Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, we'll do like, vo2 on wednesday which for people who don't really know what that is it's just like really like basically all out swimming on like two to one rest so like like hundreds on two minute or something like that um and then saturday is usually like our off the blocks day uh so we'll actually be doing like 200 fly or im or whatever um and then but like throughout the rest of the week like Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday are usually more um, like I am aerobic focused. And then maybe we'll throw in like a stroke day here and there. Um, so maybe like four, four to five practices a week um, of the eight. Ooh, a little, little extra nugget there. Eight workouts a week. Yeah. I, I, was, I was doing like 11, I think <laughs> my entire life. And then yeah. in college, we, we would do nine. Um, training is definitely evolving a little bit um well, this is my first year doing doubles actually during the school year so yeah wait hold on <laughs> well, i was on like that cody miller or like you were doing singles your entire life yeah except for in the summers yeah oh that's so much more fun. I, I know that you're doing doubles now. And I think, you know, at some point you, you want to get more training volume and you want to get more reps in like selfishly as an athlete, but oh man, I did the exact opposite. Uh, <laughs> I was doing 11 every single week for, I think my entire swimming career up until college. And then I did, I think it was nine. Yeah. I mean, like definitely, I mean, all of our practices in the past have been the mornings too. So like, coming home after school and having the rest of the afternoon off was actually, it was like really nice, but, uh, um, like, yeah, definitely getting that extra training in, it feels like it's paying off. Um, and you know, like this past weekend having that meet, um, and kind of seeing, I'm like pretty much right on my best times in my primary events, like a month or so out from like our taper meet. Um, it's just, it's not exciting. Bad. yeah. So, yeah, no, that's, we'll, that's good stuff. Yeah, good. 
All right. So, I mean, it, it sounds like from the conversation we've had so far, I know the answer to this question, but I want, I want to ask you, I want you to tell me there are different kinds of swimmers. There are, and I've, I've met both of them, many of them in my <laughs> career, and I continue to get to meet them. There are swimmers who are obsessed with data and some that are a little bit too obsessed with data and the science behind everything. And then there are swimmers who sometimes I think don't even understand the rules in some of the strokes and just are in a flow state and like go surf. And then they show up at practice and they're like, yeah, whatever, like, let's do whatever. Are you a, a data person? Are you like finishing your race, looking at your splits, thinking you can take a hundredth off there? Maybe not that, but you said kick count, stroke count, that sort of thing. I'm guessing you're like a little bit more data intensive. Yeah. Yeah, probably. A little um, bit more swim nerdy. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say I'm like on the end of the spectrum where I'm like obsessing over times and like splits and stroke counts and stuff like that um but i mean not like i'd say i have a pretty good uh knowledge of like past um past swimmers and like their times and stuff like that um and i know personally for myself like my, my stroke counts and kick counts for everything because and I, I think that that's more less of like a nerdy thing and more of like i know that helped like that's how I need the swim to be at my best. Um, but, but yeah, I definitely think I'm somewhere in the middle. I feel like um, well, Thomas, you walked right into it. You walked right into, I don't know if I would call it a trap, but uh, I had a, a question down here at the bottom. Do you think you could name all of the current NCAA records on the men's side, the swimmer and the time will go to the 10th of a second? And oh, some of some of those are going to be easier than others. So on like on like the mile, we won't make you go to the 10th on the 400 IM. We won't make you go to the 10th, but we'll say we'll say 200s and up. You don't have to go to the hundredth or I mean, OK, or the 10th. Do I have to do the thousand? Yeah, you have to do the thousand just because that was recently in the news and you should know that one. So, all right. Even though I think you just gave away that you're probably not going to get the thousand. Yeah, OK. The 50, uh, Kayla Dressel, 17, 6, 7, or something oh, six, like three. Six, oh, 6, 3. 0 for 1. <laughs> all right, well, all right. All right. Uh, th 39, 90. Yep. Um, 129, 1. Uh, you know who that one was? Dean. Yep. Man. Uh, where am I at? 500? 500. Uh, 500. 4, 406. Yeah, we'll let that one slide. I don't. I don't even know the the tenth on that one. The eight hundred. He just went like eight forty something. I think. Or eight thousand. Yeah. So, wait, wait. Do you know who the five hundred was? I say eight hundred. Um, Long course mind. Oh, I have no idea what the eight hundred is. It's it's Bobby Fink. I don't know what he. Bo oh, it's not. An eight hundred long course. Oh, eight hundred long course. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But sorry. in the in the thousand short course. Thousand, uh, Clark. Yeah, Clark Smith, I think I'll help eight, you with that eight, one. 830 something, 835. 833.8, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. The Miles Bobby, he's like 1414 14 or something, 1416. I think maybe 1412. But this is also like unfair uh, because this is like kind of my job and I put together graphics on this yeah, stuff. So that's not really my wheelhouse. So I don't <laughs> I don't pay attention to those. All right. Well, uh, this one you should get 100 fly. 4280. Yep. I had a feeling you might know that one. And uh, 200 fly. 137, like, some, like three maybe. I actually don't know. I think I don't, three, six, or eight. It's been a People while since. probably going to be commenting, but. It's been a while since. And it's like Conger, I think. Yeah, it's Conger from like. 2016. 16 or something like that. Yeah, that record is is old. And then the breaststrokes, Finnerty, 49.6. Yep. Uh, Leon just went like 146 or something ridiculous. Yeah, like 112. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and then the backstrokes, Luke Orlando, 43.3. Yep. Murphy, 135.6, I think. I think so. Yeah. Um, and then Leon has both the IMs at like 137 and one or 327 or whatever. Yeah. Those like kind of break my brain. I think it's like one. 130, 
I think it's 136 or I don't know 136 137 and then 328. Oh, and I know. Then, that was, uh, it, was what's that? The uh, Destin Lasco who broke the American record actually. Yeah, um, but, dude. That I mean, records. That that's such but, a crazy race. The the fact that like he went that fast and it was like I mean Leon's first hundred. I I don't want to talk about it too much, but I mean that that 44 L I think is maybe like yeah. the best hundred split or maybe hundred yards that has ever been swum i mean yeah I mean, it's not like 20 21 1 and then like 22 22 9 yeah 21 1 22 9 for a 44 0 which yeah. is just like yeah it doesn't doesn't compute really um with like all open turns except for one um and then relay records i think it's like all florida and then nc state for the two medley yeah, i don't texas for i don't know as well 800. 800. yeah those are those are tough to like Cause you don't like on a daily basis, think about like what you're going to go in a 200 freestyle relay. Those are, yeah. those are kind of the things that you like piece together with your teammates. Like, well, okay. I do know uh, if we're going American record, I know UVA has a 200 free. Um, Oh yeah, they do. Um, like from the, they did yeah. a 114. Oh, uh, right. I think something like that. Yeah. But I don't know. Like a lot of those, I mean, Texas 800 free, I think is American also. Yeah, it but is. a lot of them have like, like I know uh, Florida NC State have like their, their foreign foreigners on those relays. Yeah, you got Leando on, I think all of Florida's now. Um, mm-hmm. And then NC State had Casper and, and Nils. Yeah. Um, that 200 medley relay is quick. That was yeah. a, that was a fun, fun relay race. Um, and Florida, mm-hmm. dude, Florida can put together some relays, but. I have a feeling UVA might be pretty good at some in the future. All right, we'll we'll wrap up here um, with some. I have I have notes over here. Believe it or not, for the people that might think I don't ever have notes on podcasts, sometimes I probably should have more notes. But in this one, I have a section called random questions, okay. which there are three, and one of them you already answered. So we, we have we have two left. I think like four times during this, I got four of my like ten questions sniped, and was like. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to freestyle a little bit here. That was an incredible little pun to throw in there. Um, all right, number one, this is just so people since like this is you know some of your first media out there. We want people to get to know Thomas outside of what he goes in the 200 fly and whether he likes short course or long course better. If you could see one band or artist in concert, and we'll say dead or alive, we'll see, you know, maybe you're a Frank Sinatra guy. Who would it be right now on this? We'll say this Friday. You could just skip mm-hmm. practice. Okay. First of all, I've actually never been to a concert. What? So there's, there's a little <laughs> added note. Um, you, you did singles your entire career until this year and you've never been to a concert. Yeah. I mean, I can just listen to it on my phone. So, yo, Thomas, <laughs> it's different. Um, it's yeah. different. Uh, well, I don't know. I feel like I don't know. To be honest, I, I actually had no idea. You have zero. You have zero people that you would want to see in. Per- Who's like I mean, your like, your favorite artist? I feel like Michael Jackson would be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be incredible. Um, I don't know. I feel I like nowadays, like I know, like Drake and like Travis Scott usually have some pretty exciting concerts Um, i saw drake a couple months ago and it was it was pretty crazy and i'm not like a huge drake guy but that dude can can put on a performance for sure um what celebrity would you want to meet your number one pick if you get to meet one celebrity who's it going to be as like a chicago sports fan i feel like michael jordan's an obvious answer um not to flex or anything but uh i mean do it why not yeah let's go i already got that michael phelps um i already got to meet him so i guess i I checked one of the boxes there um other than that i guess like i don't know i guess a lot of the people i really like would want to meet are are athletes so it's fair yeah i don't really know i guess like i don't know like mike trout or something would be pretty cool that'd be a good one or like, Probably the most underrated and overrated and rated baseball player of all time. Yeah. <laughs> he, he gets yeah. Like, every like single Shohei end of it. Shohei would be pretty cool. Shohei would be sick. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think like, he's he's the greatest baseball player of all time. Like Steph Curry? I don't know. I think mean, they'll be 
really cool. Tom, like Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, someone like that. Yeah, the goats. I mean, you're you basically said I checked the box for swimming. I want to check all yeah. of the other goat exactly. boxes. I yeah. think that's I think that's totally fair. And then we'll uh, we'll wrap up with number three. And I feel like we might already know the answer to this one. Maybe you'll throw kind of like a curveball at us. But uh, what sport would you play if you weren't a swimmer? Basketball. Yeah, I had a feeling that one was going to happen. Um, <laughs> that was the quickest answer we got all day. Yeah. What, uh, what position did you play? Were you like a, a guard? A, were you a center? You're kind of a, a big guy for your grade. So were you yeah. in the paint just like just ruining kids like me that like weren't like developed yet i was like oh, five I, one like 85 pounds yeah i guess ironically like i actually played with like a, a lot of guys who are like pretty big for our age as well so we didn't we didn't really have positions like i feel like now i'm probably the size to play like a point guard or something like that um but i was probably more of like the center on the team i kind of played on i feel like you could um, be like pretty good power forward yeah yeah something I'm like that I think I'd just be a little bit too short now. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, that, that happens quick in that sport. Yeah. Um, all of like, a sudden, like if you're not all about like six five inches taller than everyone, and now I'm like, yeah, now I'm like six inches shorter than people I would actually be playing against. Yeah, still a reasonable height for an individual, though, coming from someone that yeah. is probably like five, we'll call it five eleven on the best day of my life. We'll give you six feet. Yeah, six feet's good. If I'm wearing boots, I'm six one. That's what I always tell everybody. And that's why I always wear boots. I mean, if you <laughs> if you see me at a swim meet, I'm probably going to be wearing boots, even though I know that the leather sole is probably not supposed to be on chlorinated ground. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, dude, good talking. I think you are well on your way to being a well-trained media individual, even if you don't have proper, we'll call it proper media training. I think you're just kind of getting thrown to the wolves. I don't really consider myself a wolf in media, but I just consider myself a, a person that's in a – in a room um and has access to a podcast microphone so man it, it's been good to, to actually just get to to meet in general um we'll see mm -hmm. if i cut out a certain section of this that you requested that i cut out if i did cut it out this is going to be a great ending because people are going to be like what did he cut out and we'll never we'll never tell anybody um yeah. but dude yeah keep crushing it enjoy doing doubles for the first time in your yeah. career that is still ridiculous um and I'm assuming this is probably not going to be the last time that we'll we'll do some sort of content um, or podcast yeah. together. So yeah, sure. I hope not. It was pretty fun. Good stuff. I'll take pretty fun for now. Hopefully, we'll be yeah. the funnest of all time next time. Um, oh. But thanks yeah. for coming on again, man. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Sockwell Show. Once again, hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Drop a comment letting me know what you thought about anything that we said. But if you're on Spotify, leave a review. Helps out the channel. Helps me put out more podcast episodes, which I do have lined up. I do. I have plenty lined up, and we're going to be a little bit more consistent going forward. I promise. I promise. If I'm not consistent, then you can comment on this video and, and call me out for it because I'm, I'm putting it out there. But yeah, thanks for listening, y'all. Like the video. Leave a review if you're on Spotify. And I'll see you on the next one. See ya.